Welcome back guys to the best Assassin's Creed Odyssey build and to the best build I have ever done. This build is so crazy, it is a level 75 max damage build. This is easily the best and craziest thing I've ever done. It will deal over 10 million melee damage in an overpower animation cancel, over 5 million range damage with your predator shots and over 40 million max damage when you hit polo marks from behind with an animation cancel here with the overpower attack. So if you want to add some of these extra horsepowers into your build, I strongly recommend to check out this video. It will be a full epic build, so you don't have to get any legendary set. And in fact, you will get level 99 damage as early as level 75. This build will have up to 100% crit chance, a crazy amount of 600% critical damage at level 75. You will have over 120% damage resorts and the warrior damage in your inventory screen will exceed over 100,000 damage, even over 110,000 damage if you have the right items. It will totally blow your mind because these numbers are normally only achieved by level 99 players. But for this build you don't have to grind to level 99, you don't have to grind hundreds of ability points, just get the gear shown in this video, play the Atlantis DLC and then you have everything you need to make this build. If you like this video then please consider to become a patron or member of this channel and support me in creating these crazy videos for you. Before we go to the inventory let's first check out the damage values and remember all this is at level 75. You will get 700,000 with the light attack, over 1 million damage with the heavy attack and easily over 3 million damage with your charged heavy attack. Ring of Chaos will be over 1.6 million damage, Fury of the Bloodline will be around 6 million damage and an overpower animation cancel will be over 10 million damage. Devastating Shots 3.7 million damage and Predator Shots easily 4.6 million or higher. Also Multi Shots can be over 2 million damage if you hit them correctly. This is all achievable on level 75 and you will get the exact same damage when you play in the Greek world. 700,000 light attack, 1 million damage, heavy attack, 3 million damage, charged heavy attack, 10 million overpower damage. It is exactly the same than in Atlantis, you will deal the same damage everywhere when you make this build. And even more so because when you hit polo marks from behind you will get even over 40 million damage. And also the mercenaries on Nightmare at level 75 will have around 1.7 million health. That is around 50% of the usual health on level 99. But you will still deal the same damage as if you are on level 99. So killing them with arrows, with devastating shots, with rush assassinations, critical assassinations is absolutely easy. And you will definitely deal enough damage to do that. Here in the inventory you have 106,000 warrior damage which is absolutely amazing at level 75 and you can even have 115,000 if you have the right pieces. We also have 235,000 assassin damage here which is alright to rush assassinate your enemies with 600% critical damage and thanks to the big horn bow we will also use our warrior damage when we shoot arrows and it is all multiplied by a factor of 1.6 which is an insane damage boost you get when you use the big horn bow. And for the folks who love to crunch numbers, here's a list of the damage per engraving for every engraving we have used here in this build. All those calculations can be found in the description as usual. For our left melee weapon we will use Hator's Harper which is the perfect epic sword with warrior damage, 40% critical damage and 24% damage swords. Those engravings which are on the swords and on your weapons and on your armor will continue to upgrade when you hit level 81 and level 91 respectively and then you will have a fully upgraded weapon with the maximum stats as well. And here in this case I choose to engrave 100% damage but health cap to 25%. But if you don't like to play with the health cap then you can simply engrave armor penetration instead which will almost give you a similar damage boost especially for your arrows or you engrave the permanent fire damage on your sword. 
The other weapon should be a perfect epic warrior sword as well with warrior damage, damage swords and critical damage again. And here we engrave convert 50% assassin damage to all damage. That engraving can be unlocked from the third episode of the Atlantis DLC. So I strongly recommend you to get the Atlantis DLC to get enough ability points to make this build and get all the needed engravings. However, if you don't have the Atlantis DLC or if you are not planning to get it, then you can simply put armor penetration here to replace the assassin damage conversion and then you will almost get the same effect. Your warrior damage will be lower, but thanks to the armor penetration you will almost deal the same damage as if you have that assassin damage conversion. Hater's Harper can be found when you do the A Friend in Need quest in Attica and another perfect epic sword can be found when you do the blacksmith reload. Simply make a manual save in front of the blacksmith and then reload them until you find a perfect epic warrior sword. Of course if you missed out on Hater's Harp you can get both of your swords from the blacksmith as well. Check out the blacksmith guide if you have trouble to do it. For our bow of course we will use the big one bow, it is only a blue bow but it will add all its DPS to our left melee weapon. If you don't use the big one bow in your build and you use any other bow, for example the Hades bow, then your damage will only be at 68,000, that is the value of your other weapon. But if you equip the big one bow and then reload the screen, your damage will suddenly be 106,000 damage. On the big hunt bow we will engrave the fully upgraded 10% crit chance. That should be no problem, once you hit level 70 you will get 10,000 drachme for every weapon you sell at that level. And you can also get the famous golden egg from the Atlantis DLC which will instantly give you 500,000 drachme. So you should have plenty amounts of money to buy all those engravings upgrade once you hit level 70 and beyond. If you don't have this item yet then totally get it, it's a complete game changer and the only item you will ever need. The Bighorn Bow is a Helix Door item but it is so cheap that you can use your 200 free Helix credits to get it for free. On the helmet we have warrior damage, 16% damage to swords and daggers, 16% critical chance while full health and then I engraved 30% damage to swords because that was the engraving which was missing from my perfect warrior helmet. However, you can get almost any kind of helmet which has these engravings. You can have warrior damage, then crit chance while full health, damage to swords and simply engrave the damage to swords and daggers on it. Or you have a warrior helmet with warrior damage, damage to swords and daggers, damage to swords and then you engrave the crit chance which is missing. So there are plenty of combinations which can give you the perfect warrior helmet from the blacksmith. It should be relatively easy to find. This particular one here however will give you the highest damage because it ensures that you will have the fully upgraded damage swords engraving on it. But if you find one with a different order it totally doesn't matter because at level 99 all engravings will be fully upgraded anyway. For our bracers we will use the stone Izu bracers which is a special item you can collect it in the third episode of the Atlantis DLC in one of the last story missions in the fort of Nemeseas. These bracers are so special because you not only getting the 8% crit chance, you will also get the 16% crit chance while full health or 10% and 20% if fully upgraded. And then you can engrave another 100% crit damage while full health to get the most out of your critical damage. As a belt we will use a Persian warrior's waistband that is also a unique item which can be found on the island of Salamis in a chest in that fort on that island. By using this belt and by adding another 100% crit damage we have an item which gives us 140% critical damage. And that is even better than when we would use a belt with warrior damage, all damage and then for example the Nemean line engraving and it will also be better than when we use a belt with warrior damage, crit chance, critical damage and another warrior damage. So if we compare all those possible items here, the Persian warrior's waistband, an item with crit chance and also an item where we use an Emir and Lion set engraving, you can easily see that the Persian warrior's waistband will only give us 106,000 warrior damage which is the least of all those three combinations. But it has the highest crit damage multiplier and if we factor in the crit damage multiplier, the Persian warrior's waistband will give us the highest highest overall damage. So by sacrificing a bit of our warrior damage we will get the much higher end result for our damage and therefore the Persian warrior's waistband is the better item to use and 106,000 warrior damage is the sweet spot to get the most damage out of this build. 
The torso should have warrior damage, all damage, critical damage and then you engrave another 20% warrior damage. You can already do that on level 75, the only requirement to do that is actually to completely upgrade it to 20%. I also randomly found an item which already had 9% all damage here, which is a little bit weird because I also had belts which only had 8% all damage. So the engraving transition is not a static line which is always for every engraving at level 81. In fact there is a chance that gets higher the closer you get to level 80. So at level 75 you already have a very small chance to get a tier 9 engraving. If you approach level 76, 78, 79, 80 then the chance to get a tier 9 engraving is higher and higher until you have level 81 where the chance is 100% and everything will be fully upgraded to tier 9 engravings. On the boots you should have warrior damage, crit chance while full health, crit damage while full health and then also engrave 20% additional warrior damage here on the boots. When we check out the total stats for this build we'll have 353% warrior damage which is totally awesome. We will have 124% damage swords which is even more than the teaser 120%. We have 94% crit chance and 600% critical damage if we use the Persian warrior's waistband. However if you use another build like shown the one with 8% crit chance or the one with the main line set engraving you can easily get to 100% crit chance. But then you will only have 540% critical damage. So I definitely prefer to have 94% crit chance with the 600% critical damage because 94% will feel like 100% anyway. And if you only level up a couple of times your engravings will also upgrade and you will have 100% anyway. To get the most out of this build you should have 150 points which is exactly the amount you should have at level 75 when you finish all your tombs and the Atlantis DLC. Put 3 points on 6 cents to double all your hunter damage once you are spotted and also to slow down time to do better assassinations. Then put 2 points on arrow master to unlock the additional fire or poison arrows for the bonus damage and then it's pretty much up to you if you use predator shot, devastating shot or multi shot. Predator shot deals the highest damage and devastating shots are the easiest to use. I choose the multi shot and the devastating shot for this build because I mostly use those two shots. Definitely mandatory is Archery Master because it gives you 40% additional headshot damage and it also refills your first adrenaline segment. When you play with swords then definitely get the charged heavy attack because it triples your heavy attack damage giving you over 3 million damage easily killing every mercenary on nightmare with this build. Get weapons master for the additional warrior damage and crit chance, gear master for the armor and if you want to use the flaming attacks of course you can put a point here on flaming attacks and then also unlock the additional 40% fire damage. Even if you engrave the permanent fire damage for your sword you should definitely put these points here because only fire mastery will actually add you fire damage for your weapon. Only having it burning doesn't add any damage but fire mastery with the 40% additional fire damage that will give you a damage boost. Then overpower attacks of course is totally brutal here with over 10 million damage. You can actually also go for Aris Madness here when you unlock the Atlantis DLC but I wanted to make a more traditional approach here. Rather going for Furious Bloodline for the Adrenaline Refill, Ring of Chaos almost dealing 2 million damage as early as level 75. So this is totally crazy. Of course don't forget to add the second wind for your health refill. Then definitely mandatory is Shadow Assassin. It gives you 40% additional assassin damage and thanks to the assassin damage conversion these 40% assassin damage will also add 20% more warrior damage. So don't forget that. Get everything that also gives you assassin damage. It will boost your warrior damage as well. And of course you also get 50% critical damage. So this ability is a no brainer. Definitely get it in every build. Then you should also get Rush Assassination, one of the best assassin abilities of all time if you ask me. If you have enough points you could also put one point here on critical assassination that should be enough to be able to assassinate everything. And don't forget to add Stealth Master for the additional 10% damage multiplier overnight. That's a real multiplier which gives you an additional 10% on top of all your damage. 
For the mastery points it is really important that you use them exactly as shown here, otherwise you would waste your points and not get enough damage. So only part 12 points here on the crit chance, don't max it out, because you get 4% for 12 points and you would only get another 1% for the next 8 points. So 12 points is actually the sweet spot here for both crit chance and crit damage. Then go for 12 points on warrior damage and then I have spent all my remaining points here on armor penetration. So if you level up after this build then go for more points on armor penetration and also more points on the fire damage. In the assassin tab you should go for 12 points on assassin damage and the only thing I would really max out to get the most damage is actually damage swords. Because that is your biggest damage driver, it's more important than critical damage, so maxing out damage swords first is actually the best option. And then you should get 15 points on critical chance while full health and another 12 points on critical damage while full health. And that's it already for the best level 70 build of all time, please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.